his uh, ideas are always crazy and this game is a big risk for him. Everything started when I met Richard. When we were engaged, we decided to make Super Seducer 1. I like doing things that people haven't done before. I thought it was um, you know, a big challenge. Mostly it was an interesting experiment. We had a very small crew. We didn't really have a director. Everyone was directing a little bit. I lived a very quiet, happy life. I'm very lucky to not need to work too much. I managed to outsource a lot of the business and so everything went a bit crazy with, with the game coming out. We kind of made it before Me Too and released it after Me Too. It weren't anything to do with seduction. It came under a lot of attention. We've got tons of negative press. Every day it, there was another article and it was very personal. It, this guy is evil, sexist, it shouldn't exist. The Guardian said, this is a Harvey Weinstein simulator. This is creating a new generation of uh, abusers. There was an article in Italy even, so my, my dad was seeing it in the biggest Italian newspaper. There was a, a petition to ban the game, it got um, a few thousand signatures. Some people were also discussing my acting or the way I look. Like, oh, this girl's Russian. Oh yes, yeah, she can't speak English. She probably doesn't understand anything he says. I was waking up in the morning feeling okay, but then reading something and just having adrenaline the whole day from it, so it was awful. It was really painful because I think it's easy for people to criticise you when they see you on screen and they kind of forget that you are a real person out there somewhere. I'm just a guy, I just made a game and people are so angry. I'm sure that if they could push a button to inflict pain on me, you know, there are thousands of people that would be happy to, to keep pushing it. And that, that's not really a nice feeling. I started doubting myself. Shit, maybe I've done something bad. Maybe I'm evil. Maybe I've made something that shouldn't exist. An awful game. And one day when we woke up and there was a video by a really big YouTuber, a video game donkey here. He was showing bits in the game and laughing and all of the comments were like, you know, this game looks hilarious, I need to get it, is it real, you know, what is it? And on that day we got a lot of uh, wish lists, people pre-ordering the game. In the end, positive feedback was greater than negative feedback. When we were having the problems with the first game, we said anyway, we won't ever do anything like it again. When the game got good reviews from the players, we had like a family meeting. We decided to have a meeting to specifically discuss whether we should do it or not. And I was saying, but you know, the first game I couldn't do it as well as, as, well as we could do it now. We learned so much, we can do it better. Many times I thought that it's not worth it filming the second part because it would involve all the same stress but not to make a second one and to just give up would be like a loser move. I wouldn't want my last word the game maker to be only a super seducer one because it wasn't the best we can do. We decided to film the second part. And in the end we, we decided that okay we can do it. From the very beginning we decided that we didn't want to just repeat 
for the first one. We were going to make it better and bigger and more interesting. To make it look as good as possible, to make the script as good as possible, to have as good acting as possible. Yes! 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 Pre-production for the second game was much, much, much longer than for the first game. We did take on board some of the criticism from the first game. Through reading all of the comments, we were making notes. It's hard to deal with critics. Um, you know, it's easy to say, don't listen to them, but obviously you're going to listen to them. It's usually massive, a lot of lights, it's usually very hot and very hectic.